Social media. Social media dominates our lives. Social media brings us all together. It puts us in touch with each other in ways we never would have imagined, you know, a couple of decades ago. Social media is one of the most important factors in a lot of our lives. Uh, but is social media healthy? Is it a positive influence in our lives? That's our topic for the day. So, social media and its uh, negative impact on our lives. There have been studies done on social media, and it has been linked to health problems. It has been linked in particular to psychological problems. There's been many, many studies that back this up. Social media is linked to mental illness in a lot of cases. There have been polls done, or some surveys done, of people reporting that they are mostly unhappy using social media, even though they're addicted to it and have to use it. Nearly 63% of Instagram users report being miserable. 59% of Facebook users are unhappy with the amount of time they spend on the site. 57% of Reddit users report the same thing, that they're unhappy. Yet, you know, people still use social media. They're constantly on it hours a day. Why is the case? Why are these people reporting that they hate using these sites? They're miserable. They're unhappy when they use these sites or these apps, yet they spend so much time on it. It's because social media is highly addictive. That's just a fact. There's been research into this. Social media is as addictive as drug addiction, gambling addiction, alcohol addiction, what have you. Uh, the good part about social media addiction is it is a easy habit to kick, unlike something like drug addiction or gambling addiction, which can haunt somebody's life for their entire lives. Uh, kicking a social media addiction habit isn't that hard. So that's the positive, but the fact that social media is so addictive, it's a problem. So uh, what are some of the problems using social media? What's the problem of using some of these sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Reddit, what have you, uh, things like Snapchat? Well, some of the problems include that it's not really real life. That is one of my biggest complaints uh, and, and why I've pretty much spent my entire life avoiding social media. I refused forever to sign up for any kind of social media account, personally speaking. It's because I've seen how it dominates other people's lives. They have to check their Facebook page every two minutes to see what's happened in the last two minutes since they checked their Facebook page the last time. Or they're constantly getting these Twitter notifications on their cell phone and they have to respond immediately or, you know, refresh their Reddit page to see who's commented on whatever post they've made. Uh, it dominates people's lives. And I, I see this in other people. I don't want to see myself become that. So I pretty much refused forever to sign up on things like Facebook and Twitter and have any social media presence at all. The only reason I now have some social media presence is because I do this YouTube channel and a lot of my viewers expect me to have some kind of social media presence. They expect to have some way of conversing with me via social media. So when I started my YouTube channel, I did sign up for a Facebook page and a Twitter page. Since then, I've deleted both of them because of privacy issues was the main reason. But also, again, I don't like social media. I don't want to use social media. I hate myself even logging into something like Facebook and trying to, you know, see all the nonsensical stuff that goes on and, you know, people posting about whatever they had for their last meal or uh, and also, it's not real life. Again, it's not real life what's happening on social media. For example, it creates unrealistic expectations about life. Most of the stuff people post on things like Facebook and Twitter are like the exaggerated things that happen in their lives. It's not, you know, the everyday mundane stuff. It's always these, you know, big things, you know. And it creates unreal 
unrealistic expectations about life in general because, you know, once you get off of that social media site and you're back in the real world again, everything's just kind of normal and mundane, you know, it might bring you down a little bit because you're so used to all the excitement that happens on social media. This is another thing. Social media, why people report being unhappy, uh, you know, it's like, 90% of everything you see on social media is all the memes, the animal pics, all the animated GIFs, you know, all the jokes and, you know, all that stuff. But that's not real life. You know, so you you, you spend all your time on things like Facebook and you see all of this crap. And then you get off of it and you're back in the real world. It brings you down a little bit. That's why a lot of people report being unhappy. It's because real life is not like the social media. So... Another reason is it makes people jealous. Social media does because you see what somebody else is doing with their life. Maybe they're achieving more in their life than what you are. You know, that person you went to high school with, you know, that person was nobody when you knew him 20 years ago. But now he is somebody important and maybe life hasn't worked out for you the way it's worked out for that guy. So it tends to make people jealous. It also makes people nosy. I mean, they go around really checking out other people's Facebook page or Twitter accounts to see what other people are doing, um, not out of interest, but just being nosy. Yeah. So that's one thing. People become jealous. People become nosy. It ruins relationships, especially romantic relationships. You're in a relationship, you know, whether it's boyfriend, girlfriend or husband and wife. You know, a lot of people like to snoop on their significant other, see what they're doing on their social media accounts. A lot of people have real trust issues with their significant other being on social media. So another big negative, though, is social media is stressful. It produces stress in your life. A lot of people spend a lot of time on social media websites, mainly to argue. There is a sizable percentage of people out there that pretty much love to argue. They're addicted to finding an argument. Uh, Now, in real life, you know, you can find people to argue with in real life, but they're not instantly there at your beck and call 24-7 the way they are on social media. On social media, you can argue all day with different people if you so choose. This has a very negative impact on your health. Uh, The... Very long hours people spend on social media causes very real physical ailments such as carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, eye problems, eye fatigue, just general fatigue, your body fatigue, lack of exercise, the lack of getting outdoors, getting sunlight, you know, you know, actually being outdoors, even just for a few minutes actually is healthy for you, you know, uh, a lack of sunlight, for example, you know, you will be uh, deficient in certain vitamins, you know, just from being indoors all day. Uh, another reason that it's not good for you is just the distraction from life. You know, social media distracts you from what you should be doing in real life. You should be focusing on work, family, church, whatever hobbies you have, uh, whatever life commitments you have. When you're on social media, you are ignoring all that. You have your priorities all screwed up when you are on social media. Other distractions from life would be also uh, the fact that people like can't go to a restaurant and leave social media behind. They're checking social media. Some people can't even drive and leave social media behind, which is insanely dangerous to drive and, you know, posting a tweet, for example. Uh, you could kill yourself Even worse, you could kill somebody else doing something like that. Emotional connections is another problem with social media. Is These are not real people you're talking to. They're pixels on a screen. Social media, yeah, you're connecting with people, but again, it's not a real face. It's not a real voice, especially, you know, when you're just typing something on a keyboard and on a screen. That's not a real person you're talking to. If you want to talk to somebody and they're your actual friend, pick up a phone. Instantly, you will be so much happier actually speaking to that person than conversing with them through a computer monitor or cell phone screen. Uh, Other problems with social media include uh, just the 
crazy amount of wrong information that gets posted on social media. The most obvious example, and there's been a lot of people that have lost their life to these kinds of things, is health-related information. Everybody, you know, posts their health advice on things like Facebook and Twitter, whatnot. And the wrong advice often is harmful, and it has led to a lot of deaths, actually. So people don't believe everything you see on social media. Don't believe, especially health-related information, but even people post things like news-related. And, you know, I, I hate to use the Donald Trump quote, but there's a lot of fake news out there. So don't believe everything you read on social media. In fact, my advice, don't believe anything you read on social media. Uh, if you must use social media, because I know some people have to use social media, studies show that things like Messenger and FaceTime are the best options for you from a health perspective. Why? Because using things like video chat clients, you know, phone clients, people report being much happier using those technologies than your traditional web-based social media. It makes sense, too. It turns out actual live conversations with an actual live human being, especially if you can see them, that's, that's hard to beat. So, again, this is just, you know, me, a public service announcement. I, I know many of you spend hours on social media every day, and you got to get it in check. Guys, you got to get this stuff in check. Um, anyway, ran over. Before I go, let me give a quick shout out to my patrons. A special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. A.K. Ron, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Matt, Darkwin, Mark, Christian, Jake, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Interceptor, Bob, Leor, Omar, Silvio, David, and Alex. You guys are awesome. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.